This video is sponsored by PCB Way. Gear pumps are reliable, efficient and widely used pumps. Also the working concept of the pumps are so simple which make them easy to design, print and build. This is exactly what I'm going to do in this video. In June 2021 I actually had already done this and then one month later I did it again. But then it was way smaller and there was a huge flood that I didn't notice right away. In the first video of my gear pump series I used one 775DC motor to run the water pump. But I had used this motor before many many times and this just didn't perform as it should. So the performance of the water pump was pretty not good. I didn't know this was the problem before I built more those pumps with brand new motors and then the performance was night and day. So in this video I am going to build the gear pump again. I also keep everything as easy as possible. We only need 4 3D printed parts, a bit M4 bolts and one shaft and shaft seal. So before we can start building we need to 3D print all necessary things. Gears I printed with my Ender 3 S1 Pro. For housing I used Creality Sermon D1 and for the lead I didn't use any 3D printer because I wanted to use acrylic lead so I use PCB Way CNC service. Now when everything is printed we can start destroying my last video whatever these are for a couple of parts. And then it's time to start building. First I attach rigid flange couple to the bottom of the driver gear with M4 bolts. But for some reason the holes didn't line up. This was my little measurement error. I fixed this 3D printed new gear and um so what the fuck happened again? I did fix the measurements, I sliced the new gear and exported this file to my 3D printer. So how it's possible? Well, in the printer I selected the old file instead of the new one. I mean, this type of things happens when you have IQ equal to room temperature. <laughs> anyway, I have correct gear now and I attach this thing to the driver gear. Then I spin the gear for 5 seconds for no reason and after this was done I installed the shaft seal to the bottom of the housing. Next I added the gears into the housing. I just put them in there. Fits there perfectly by the way. Now the lead and I'm going to use acrylic lead from the PCB Way who is also today's video sponsor. I have worked with PCB Way almost two years now and use bunch of their services and always they have done absolutely excellent job. You probably know PCB Way as a company that makes custom PCBs and that makes sense because they are doing it. But also they have 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, CNC machining and even injection molding service. If you need something that requires specific and expensive machines to produce, PCB Way is your one stop solution. Also this is so easy to use, just select how you want your part to manufacture it, upload your model, choose the color, also some specifics if needed. Now PCB Way does the rest and you will see your part really soon. I highly recommend to use PCB service if you don't have required machines or tools. Link is down below. But for now let's continue with the project. You see here are two negative extrusions. On the lead that you can 3D print there is two positive extrusions. This should help with leaking and tighter fit but my acrylic lead doesn't have those. I'm just going to use silicone to make this water tight. By the way I had another 0.1mm error. This fit has to be really tight to decrease the water leaking. But right now it's so tight that it won't fit there. So of course I'm not going to print whole new housing. I just sand this 0.1mm down. So this is what I did next. Now the lead fits on the housing perfectly. Before I secured the lead to the housing with M4 bolts I also used a bit, a bit silicone. I also attached the dreads to attach the hose nozzles to the pump. I'm usually using half an inch nozzles. This time because the water pump is also a bit bigger I decided to use 3 fourth of inch nozzles. I'm using those ones for the first time. I was not sure about clearances while designing the pump so yeah I messed up even this measurement. The holes were a bit undersized and the dreads I forced in just pressured the water pump so hard that some layers got separated. Of course this is not game over I just took a bit more silicone and started filling those broken spots. Going to test this water pump has a challenge. Outside is minus 10 degrees, so it's pretty cold for playing with water. Anyway, I was at full survival mode and I tried to test this, so I keep everything traditional. One bucket of water and we are good to go. By the way, I'm going to drive this water pump with my power drill. This time I'm not going to use my 4 motor gearbox like I have done in the previous videos. So first I test the self priming. Gear pumps are positive displacement water pumps, so they are self priming pumps. But mine didn't want to get started. I have also theory but I speak about this later. To get this water pump started for now I remove the tube.
Now the bump did start, but the performance was not that great that I expected. And also, my level of recording videos is also pretty high, so you cannot even see the stream of water. <laughs> I tried to color the videos a bit to make something appear on the video, so this is the best I can offer. Remember those cracks that I filled with silicone? Well, I didn't do the best job by filling those cracks around the inlet side, so that's why I had an idea that the air might leak in through them, and the performance got heavily damaged. So I bring my silicone out again and started filling those cracks around the inlet, and this time I really made sure that there is no chance to air leak in. By the way, the problematic area was only the inlet side of the water pump, the outlet was completely fine. Like the easier and faster solution for this problem would be swapping the outlet and inlet by pressing one button on the power drill. But you know I born this way. So now I am ready to test this again, but this time I am doing this on my bathroom. Outside too cold and also because of the snow it's pretty hard to record. So I filled the bath with water and started testing. First I tested self priming, but sadly this didn't change a lot, not, not at all actually. I again removed the tube and just pumped some water. How well it works, well I let you decide by following footage. One thing is for sure, this gear pump works, but to be honest, I expected a bit better result. Also, the easy way to increase the performance is to spin this water pump faster, because right now I'm using only power drill. Anyway, if you find this video interesting, then for sure you like my previous videos, where I printed and built really complex slow pumps. By the way, my recent projects have been about water pumps. If you are unhappy about that, I can say I'm going to do a little break from those and I'm going to build a bit different things. I have a lot of great ideas and I'm already working on those. So 2023 will be a great year for this channel. So if you don't want to miss my future content then please hit the subscribe button, it's a huge support for me and keeps this channel going. By the way, thank you for watching and see you guys really soon. Bye.